But you look at Joe Burrow's season and you're like, this has to be the greatest season for a four and seven quarterback in the history of the National Football League. If he was, if they were seven and four, if they were eight and three, he'd be the runaway MVP candidate, even with Lamar Jackson. But you can't even mention him in the conversation because they're four and seven, but leads the league in passing yards with 3,028, 27 touchdowns, only four interceptions, multiple five touchdown games that he lost. Like, if I throw five touchdowns and no interceptions and we lose, I'm going to have a hard time showing up to work the next day. And if I do, I'm going to be swinging on a lot of people. Every single person. I'm I, I, Somebody's getting swung on because I'm doing my part and I'm showing up and I'm, I'm pushing the envelope and y'all are letting me down. And honestly, it's his defense. It's his defense. The defense is letting him down. I mean, you give up 34 points to the Chargers. This is a good offense, but you can't have it. And every single week, they give up more points than they get. And Joe Burrow is carrying his team on his back time after time. You get really good. You get T. Higgins back. T. Higgins comes in, nine catches, 148 in a tug. Uh, Jamar Chase has two touchdowns, seven catches, 75 yards. Evan McPherson. These kickers. The, these kickers. Justin Tucker, the Hall of Famer, let us, I mean, the kickers this week, I don't know what happened, what's gotten into them, but they're just blowing it. And then the reporters are asking Jamar Chase, because they, I guess they wanted him to do what Debo did the other day and talk to him. And he said, I didn't say nothing to him because he, we know his job. You know what he's supposed to do? Make the kicks. They paid him a lot of money. He ain't making the kicks. So y'all better go talk to the head coach because I'm out here playing well and, and the rest of y'all not. So they scored points, 356 yards for Joe Burrow. I mean, they were hitting it and getting it in that fourth quarter. I mean, that third and fourth quarter when they got the lead back. But I don't, I don't, I really don't know where you go from here if you're Cincinnati. I mean, because you got to see the frustration with Joe Burrow. You can tell he's not happy. He said as much after the game reporter asked him, Is this the most frustrating season you've been ever had? And he says, Yeah, it's pretty self explanatory. And Richard, you talked about it. The defense has not stood up. Uh, I, the kicker, we talked about it with him and uh, Jake Moody. And like you said, Justin Tucker, these kickers are really struggling and costing teams games right now. NFL's next-gen stats says the Cincinnati Bengals have a 9% chance of making the playoffs. Richard, how likely do you think it is that they are done? Highly likely. I mean, I, if you're saying 9%, I would. that's on the high side. I would have thought it was 0.9 or something because – I just don't see it. I don't see the Steelers are getting better. You already lost to the Ravens twice. I don't even know if you beat the Browns, you know? So within your division, you that you got to buy a week so you guys can think about it and lick your wounds and recalibrate, but then you play Pittsburgh, and maybe you find a way to get that game. Maybe you find, and you're five and seven, but can you get them twice? Like, can, can you can you keep getting them? Can you get the, 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 uh, the Cleveland Browns? Can you... Can you win the rest of your games? And I just don't know what this defense, they haven't shown that. They've shown flashes of decent play, but you you just can't find a lot of talent on the D-line outside of the guys that you, you're expecting, you know? They got a couple guys doing a lot of work and nobody else. Um, uh, Trey Hendrickson, I think he has like 11 or 12 sacks. Then, then the next highest on their team is like three. So you, you can't have that kind of that kind of gap within your team. You need more. He needs help. And in a secondary, you can't cover forever. So no matter what calls you call, you can't play man for four or five seconds. You can't play zone for four or five seconds. You're going to get picked apart. And that's what's happening. You can't expect this with, without guys getting to the quarterback. That's why pass rushers are such a premium, because if you have time to, to, to pick your defense apart, they're going to, and they have. Well, when it comes down to the Chargers, Richard, this team, again, they are there seven and four right now. They got their first real big test of the year against the Baltimore Ravens. If there's one knock when it comes to this seven and four Chargers, it's you look at the quality of their wins. I mean, they've beaten the Raiders. They've beaten the Panthers, the, the Broncos, the Saints, the Browns, the Titans, and now the Bengals. I mean, there's not really any game that's a marquee win on that uh, on that record right now. 
Who who do you like in the upcoming game against Baltimore? Do you think the Chargers have a have a shot to take it to them? Yeah. I mean, I, I have to believe that now after watching their game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Pittsburgh Steelers, six field goals beat them. Six field goals. They, the Baltimore Ravens stood up in the red zone, held them 0 for 4 in the red zone, but they, they couldn't get anything on offense. They got the one touchdown, and then they missed two field goals, and they stopped. They went away from the run game, and I got Baltimore Ravens fans say, oh, there's so much more to the game, so much more. Well, like, like then tell me what it is. Tell me what else, M- Mr. Expert. Like, they lost four games this year, and, and it just happens that Derrick Henry's not getting a lot of touches. And you're like, well, Lamar was inaccurate. He overthrew some passes. That's going to happen sometimes. It's still, it's still the MVP of the league. He's going to miss some passes. That's why you run the ball. Kickers miss some kicks. Guess what? Run the ball. Like, you, you, you got a problem with my logic? Then check yourself before you wreck yourself because it's bad for your health. And so – I, I think the Chargers can win this game because defense, Metro, defense, defense, defense. And if and if they play better defense, and now Lamar Jackson is, is a cheat code, but certain teams have just had him. He's great against NFC teams, but AFC teams can have his number. I mean, the Raiders beat him this year. So I think if they have if they're fully healthy, the Chargers are gonna give them all a run for their money. Their defense has been near the bottom of the pack in a lot of categories, especially pass defense. So if the Chargers get going and and they get to run in power at a high level and a high tilt, I think the Chargers can win this game. And now for this week's segment of seeding the teams, brought to us by our friends at Scott's Lawn Care. Now, Richard, the AFC playoff seeding is it's a tight one as well. The Chiefs retain the one seed despite the loss to the Bills. The Bills come in second, followed by the Steelers. And then the Texans. And then our wild card recipients are the LA Chargers, the Baltimore Ravens, and the Denver Broncos. What are your thoughts on, on the current way this AFC playoff seating looks? I'm interested to see how these Kansas City Chiefs play the Chargers. Those games I want to watch, and I want to watch them really closely because that can change the seedings for me. I think the Buffalo Bills can sneak into that one spot. Maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers if the Bills stumble because now the Miami Dolphins are back at full strength. It's just a lot of things that are changing throughout this season. Um, If the Houston Texans can get hot, maybe they move up a spot. But right now, I think it's that one-two seed that may split by the end of the season. Well, we don't know how it's all going to fall, Mitchell, but I bet you didn't know that fall is the perfect time to feed your lawn. Give your lawn a boost with Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard. Recover from the summer, prep for winter. Scott's Winter Guard puts your lawn on the road to recovery from damage caused by the summer heat. Feed your lawn Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard this fall to build strong, Deep grass roots for a better lawn next spring. Repairs from summer fun, strengthens for winter, prepares for spring, secures your fall fun for you. Pick up a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. Feed your lawn. Feed it. Hey Richard, let's take the buy or sell. I'm going to give you a couple statements. You're going to tell me whether you will buy or sell them. And let's start with Joe Burrow. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, despite his record, if this team were seven and four as opposed to four and seven, he'd probably be about be amongst the top two for the MVP odds. Uh, but their reality is they're four and seven. Despite that, do you think Joe Burrow is a top three QB in this NFL? Yeah, you got it. He's playing like it. I give him all the credit in the world. Look, I, I, you cannot take that away from him. He's got 27 touchdowns, four interceptions. He he plays at an elite level, even when his offensive line is collapsing. Um, other guys aren't playing. He's had an incredible season. He doesn't deserve the record that he has, but he does have it. Um, so, yes, I, I'll buy that. I'll buy Joe Burrow playing his butt off. He's top three quarterback in the National Football League. Uh, Richard, let's talk a little bit about Josh Allen. He he pulled off the impossible, taking down Patrick Mahomes. Right now, Vegas has him as the leader in the clubhouse with the MVP odds at plus 150, just in front of Lamar, who's plus 200, and my guy Jared Goff at plus 600. Richard, do you agree with this right now, that Josh Allen should be the leader uh, amongst uh, NFL odds for MVP? I think Vegas is obviously reacting to the Baltimore Ravens losing that game and the Buffalo Bills beating an undefeated Kansas City Chiefs team. 
you got to respect that. But I think at the end of the year, they're going to look at the numbers. Lamar is going to make enough plays down the stretch. We all know how the Baltimore Ravens do in December. And I think they're going to give it to Lamar Jackson for a third time. Unless something, you know, obviously if something crazy happens and and Josh Allen goes on some crazy touchdown throwing spree, I don't see it. Because like we just said, Joe Burrow has 27 touchdowns and, and four interceptions. I, I think Josh Allen has 18 touchdowns, five interceptions. Like it, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even be beating Joe Burrow. And, and a lot of teams wouldn't, a lot of guys wouldn't be beating Joe Burrow if, if it came down to it right now. But I don't, I don't see him beating Lamar Jackson with it again. I'm a stats guy. I'm a numbers guy. And Lamar Jackson is still up there in every single statistical category. He's, He's thrown for 2,800 yards. He's got 25 touchdowns, only three interceptions on the season. You look at those numbers, that's an MVP season. So I hear you, Vegas, but it, they just make it a money, Mitchell. They just make it a money, babe. I'm right there with you. I personally think it's Lamar's uh, trophy again this year. 